Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper at Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In today's video, I'd like to address when you should get imaging studies for knee pain and which imaging study is the best to get. Should you have, for example, an x-ray, an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound, etc. First, I need to pause for a moment to remind you to please like this video and please subscribe to our channel to help us continue to grow and hopefully to reach and help more people. Okay, let's talk about imaging studies and knees. When should you get an imaging study for knee pain? First off, knee pain is a broad category, so we're going to need to break this up a little bit. If you have a significant trauma to your knee, for example, um, for example, from a hard tackle while playing soccer or a, a tough fall while skiing or any kind of violent twisting of your knee in a fall, where afterwards you have significant knee pain and difficulty with weight bearing, and certainly if you hear or you feel a pop in the knee during the trauma, then you're definitely going to want to get an MRI of that knee. The MRI in this instance is first and foremost to evaluate the integrity of the ligaments in the knee and the MRI is the best diagnostic choice as it remains the gold standard for this purpose. Now, if you just have knee pain and there wasn't any significant trauma that led to the knee pain in the first place, then that's gonna be a completely different category of knee pain and imaging as we, as we think about it. So let's talk about this more common category now. If you have significant knee pain that's been getting worse for, let's say a month or two, then should you get an imaging study? And if so, which one? Now, some doctors are going to be quick to recommend an x-ray of the knee when someone comes in with knee pain of any significant duration. Why do they do that? Well, why would they want to get an x-ray? Well, the advantages of an x-ray is that it gives you a snapshot of the bony integrity of the knee and the basic overall state of the joint space. So basically, an x-ray shows you bone and air. Now, if you aren't worried about a fracture in the bone, then the x-ray in this case will just tell you the general status of the joint. If it's in an older person, it can tell you the relative state of arthritis. This might be an interesting um, data point for general background information and also for some prognosticating about the knee. You just have to remember that every older person will have at least some knee arthritis. So you don't want to read too much into the fact that you're going to see some arthritis in an older person. In a younger person, I have a harder time understanding the rationale for the x-ray other than to just make sure that there are no surprises when you get the x-ray. Now, an advantage of the knee x-ray is that it's inexpensive, it's a quick test to get, uh, it's easy to get, there's very little radiation. The disadvantage is that it rarely, if ever, is going to change the treatment course. And for me, as you may be able to tell, I'm reluctant to get an x-ray at first simply because I'm not a fan of imaging studies that aren't going to change the treatment path. In older patients, if we just want to have a general picture of the state of arthritis, the x-ray can serve this purpose, and sometimes I'll get the x-ray in that instance. Now, I've worked at big-name hospitals, including for the Hospital for Special Surgery, which at the time was the number one or two ranked orthopedic hospital in the country. Um, and there, at the time, the policy was that just about every patient that we would see would have an x-ray before we even saw them for the first time in the office. So clearly it's common for uh, excellent physicians, excellent institutions to get x-rays for knee pain um, and all manner of orthopedic pain problems uh, when people first present with, with knee pain. Um, for me and for many others, I just don't love the trade-off of even a little radiation for information that isn't going to be used uh, to direct the next step of treatment. Most patients who present with knee pain will either have patellofemoral syndrome or arthritis or a degenerative meniscus tear or tendonitis. Patellofemoral syndrome is a clinical diagnosis that doesn't require imaging to make the diagnosis. Likewise, tendonitis is a clinical diagnosis that's not going to require any imaging studies. A meniscus tear and or arthritis can be, seen on can be seen on imaging, but most people who are over 50 will have a good chance of having a meniscus tear and or arthritis anyway without having any symptoms. So because of all this background noise, meaning because so many people are going to have findings of meniscus tears and osteoarthritis in the knee without any symptoms, the imaging study isn't going to change the treatment course, at least not initially. Initially, the treatment for uncomplicated knee pain will almost invariably involve therapeutic exercises 
And if the pain is terrible, and if they can't participate with exercises, the patient may receive an injection of steroid or Toradol to calm down the inflammation first. Visco supplementation is also a good choice of injection treatment for meniscus tears and arthritis if the symptoms are resistant to more conservative measures like therapeutic exercises. Now, some insurance companies will require an x-ray first to document degenerative arthritis before approving reimbursement for visco supplementation. I think this is a mistake on behalf of the insurance companies, um, but I think insurance companies have lots of mistaken policies, and I've learned in over 15 years of practice um, and of dealing with insurance companies that you can't fight City Hall and you can't fight medical insurance companies when it comes to things like this. So sometimes, assuming that the patient wants the medication covered by the insurance uh, and isn't self-pay, then you may need to get an x-ray first if you're considering visco supplementation as a, as a treatment approach. Now, if the knee pain is not improving with good conservative care, or if there's ever a question of uh, stability of the knee joint, that is, if there's a question of whether or not a ligament might be torn, then you need a good imaging study. And the best imaging study at that point is going to be an MRI. The MRI remains the gold standard diagnostic test for knee pain and for evaluating the integrity of the ligaments in the joint, as well as for evaluating the meniscus. If surgery is being considered, then you're going to want to get an MRI in order to plan out what surgery might be most appropriate. Diagnostic musculoskeletal ultrasounds have come a long way in their ability to evaluate the knee joint and the meniscus and the ligaments. And CAT scans offer a pretty good picture, but, the, but at the expense of having a lot of radiation involved with the CAT scan. So with all these factors considered, MRI is still the best imaging study for knee pain. And if you're thinking of surgery because the knee's not getting better with good conservative care, or if you're worried about the stability of the joint because you think there may be a ligament tear, then again, MRI is going to be the test that you're going to want to get. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you have enjoyed it, uh, please remember to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can reach me at Dr. Cooper at PrincetonSJC.com or feel free to leave a question or a comment for me in the comment section. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.